Hello, everyone. Uh, I, my name is Austin Belzer. You probably already knew that, um, but um, I'm here with the director and uh, the producer of Last Night in Razi, which is coming out, I believe, the 17th, if I'm not mistaken. All right. And Ryan also is the writer. He's a screenwriter as well. Right, right. And it's the story about, well, I'll, I'll let you describe it, Ryan. <laughs> All right, it's about going home back to Boston. It's uh, Ronnie Russo is the main character played by Neil Brown Jr. Uh, and he gets a call from Jeremy Sisto, who plays uh, his childhood best friend, uh, Joey Donovan, who is dying uh, from alcoholism and wants to see him one last time. And they both suffered a huge uh, traumatic incident 25 years ago, the last time they saw each other. And so when Ronnie goes back home, it brings back all the trauma that he has to kind of deal with while he's trying to help out his friend before he dies. Yeah, and um, you talk about this um, cyclical thing, um, this thing, this it's almost like this, it's this inescapable thing that you talk about. Sorry, my chair is creaking. Um, right. But this in, inescapable thing, almost like, I, I would liken it almost to like a monster in the closet. I probably overuse that, but it's this cyclical nature. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Sure. I mean, the cycle of harm is, you know, you, you hit it on the head. It's this thing that kind of gets passed down from generation to generation. I mean, we get a lot of good stuff from previous generations. We get a lot of bad stuff. And it's this idea of, you know, when somebody is suffering and they don't get help for that suffering, um, it's inevitable that they pass it on not only to the people around them that they love and, and care about uh, as they're hurting, it's, it's hard not to hurt anyone else, but they'll pass it down to that next generation. It's really hard to be a good parent if you don't get past uh, any sort of damage you might have had from your own parents. Um, and we all have some, but you know, some more than others. And so that sort of ending the cycle of, of harm and, and damage, you know, growing up in a, in a difficult situation, um, you know, that it's just, it's paramount for, um, for a better world, honestly. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. Um, and I think there's this kind of temptation when you're making a movie about um, poor families or single families um, to kind of fall into a, a lane, I, I, I should say. Um, but I don't think you do that here um, from what I've seen. And like, what were the thing, big things that you wanted to avoid with that i mean I, and i'll i'll let sean jump in too but i'll just start with yeah we don't want to be cliche with any of this stuff you know it, it, because it, it it can really take away from that that message it, it just has to be a personal story and i think for me trusting my own personal experience uh and taking that and then doing research for the the parts of it that i needed to fill in uh, finding out from people who know more about that experience, you know, was very important. And authenticity was absolutely key for this, uh, shooting it in Roslindale, where I grew up, um, and in these neighborhoods and getting the accent right and all these things that, you know, my friends and family from back home would kill me if it didn't do right. Uh, those were really important, you know, but really just telling a, 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 as, as simple a story as, as possible um, about this sort of going home and and dealing with this this trauma that's very specific, but also there's a lot of generalized stuff as well. Um, so just making sure that um, we're true to to life, you know, that is it's not just a, a dream in my head. Like, wouldn't it be cool if if this happened? And it's like, no, it all has to be you know uh, researched and 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 from my own experience and from beyond my experience. Yeah, for sure. Um, for for one moment. I kind of, you know, growing up for myself, I thought, you know, wouldn't it, personally, I would have injected some things like, and this is just my own experience, um, growing up with ramen noodles, like a, a stack of them in, mm -hmm. in, in the pantry closet. Um, uh, that would, I, I think that's something that I think maybe people don't get, you know, um, with, you know, maybe affluent families or families in different neighborhoods. Um, is that just, you know, ramen at the bottom of the pantry? That's always just kind of sitting there, but you know, it's, 
meals. Do you have a deal with ramen, Austin? Do you have like a sponsorship deal that we should know about? I mean, if they want to, <laughs> I would not be. What's your favorite flavor packet? That's uh, <laughs> we need to make sure you get the right right the right box. Let's see. I, um, I, I'm I'm an original guy. I'm 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 much more of a chicken guy, but I can go beef if I have to. Me too. Me too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, fair enough. Yeah. Yeah. Really, the chicken is so versatile. It's like a good, you know, you can you can kind of throw anything in there, right? <laughs> yeah. You could even like. Um, Oh, what did I used to do with it? I think I like sprinkled something on top of it. I I can't remember what it is. It's been so long. <laughs> like I think there was like a recipe where you could also like put some. I don't I don't know why people did this, but like mac and cheese with it too. Mm. Kind of make your own kind of mac and cheese with it. I never did that, but I heard it. It's something I should try. But hey. Marichan, if you want to sponsor, <laughs> send over like a crate, right? I would not be okay. I would be fine with it. Hey, Austin, I mean, you're speaking my language. You're talking about you know mac and cheese and, and the ramen and all that stuff. Like, absolutely, I I, I totally uh, I totally get all that stuff. You know, he had a whole um, when this was a bigger budget production we had all these uh we we had them as, as children you know and we got to see a lot of like where they're coming from and so we only see them as adults and we get to see joey you know who, who sort of stuck in the neighborhood and and never really got out and and never got out of his own way you know alcoholic who's dying yeah. we get to see what that looks like in his apartment when uh when ronnie goes back there um and you know and it's not a pretty picture um so I'm with you, man. Like being able to to show where people come from when they don't have means and they don't have help, it's really important. Yeah, yeah. I think the thing that um, you know, the flashbacks that we have now uh, in the film, when we see them as kids, are they're really about establishing that relationship between the two of them, between the two main characters, and seeing sort of like the origin story of why they are so they are so diehard loyal to one another. Um, but what I love about the film is that the way the places that we see them and like the setting that we see them in is very like rough kid, like kind of like, you know, in the abandoned in, you know, behind the abandoned building, you know, uh, with the rusty basketball hoop and, you know, like they're, they're hanging out in the spot that like, you know, the this broken glass on the floor, you know, it's like they're hanging out in those places that kind of like, you know, if you had a better place to go, you would, <laughs> you know, but yeah. th this is kind of where this is their, this is their spot is that, is that kind of like a rusty nail vibe of a, of a, of a, of a place, which I think infers a lot. Uh, Cause both the kids, you, you kind of learn in, in the backstory that they're both, that neither of them come from great families and they're all, and both of them are, um, you know, they're, they're kind of outsiders uh, themselves. Uh, if, uh, as kids in different ways, but I think that's what draws them together. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you described the rusty nail situations, and I can remember a situation like that. I mean, I was at a at one of my friend's birthday party, and he's like, hey, I know this old abandoned factory. Want to go hang out there? And I'm like, <laughs> you know what? Sure. I got nothing better to do. I'm at, uh, uh, And then I think uh, I think the statute of limitations is out on this. Uh, All right, we. I'll, I'll look it up. Uh, All right. We we ended up like, like what was it like throwing bottles for some reason? I guess there was like bottles. Don't need a reason. They're oh, bottles. Okay. No yeah. reason necessary. Because they're there. Because yeah. the windows were there. Someone didn't break them yet. Yeah, <laughs> that's why. And it, it was like there was a cop nearby, and we thought he had heard us. Uh, throwing all those bottles because I mean it's an abandoned warehouse. Mm. I mean you think, okay, nobody cares. Uh, and then I I can't remember what, but I think we ended up like trying to play it cool with the cop, but he definitely knew that we were in there. Oh my god, Austin! We tried to get we we would try to get chased by the cops. Like that was an actual thing we tried to do. So we'd be sitting, you know, in the schoolyard. Where I really wanted to shoot, but we couldn't shoot there. But we, you know, it's at the bottom of like the top of a hill, but it was like this this area with a fence over it. And we'd find a golf ball because we'd go like you know harass people that were golfing because we were like snobs, you know, grab the golf balls and stuff. 
And then we go to the thing and we just start hitting them into the neighborhood and like waiting for a crash and you'd hear a crash and then you take off when you heard the siren. So uh, not proud of it, but it was, it was a lot of fun. Uh, I'm glad I don't do that anymore because I'm a grown, grown man, but you know, you look back and last time got... you bat. Yeah. It's, so it's been a while since you batted a golf ball randomly. Years. What you're saying is you did not do that last week. <laughs> Definitely not last week. Okay. All right. All right. Just check. I got an alibi. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of statute of limitations. Yeah, just uh, look that up real quick. Uh, no, uh, <laughs> nice callback. I like it. But uh, but no, it, it, it is. I don't think there are many films that are about this unique experience of, hey, um, let's just like hang out, I, but also talk about these deeper discussions about Again, we talk, we talk about that cyclical nature um, of, you know, you talk about the people who don't get out. Um, um, a few years ago, I was volunteering at a, what was it, homeless shelter, I think? Yeah. And the thing I had to try and get through to people, um, and going to Colorado, if you guys have ever been to Colorado and done any, spent any more than a day there, um, you know that there's kind of this cyclical thing mm. to it, homelessness is not just a thing that's a choice mm. or or I think the term is houselessness apologies um but and I think it's just that thing you have to get through, through with our head um that this isn't a choice some of these things are just very very cyclical um i mean yeah. you kind of get into um well blind spotting kind of was the big thing i think that got people to recognize and even the tv show which i recommend everyone go see even mm. though some people might not have stars um uh, it's talking about the cyclical nature of the prison system it's talking mm -hmm. about uh racism mm -hmm. and but yeah, I, I just, I really appreciate that um, because I don't think there are many films like that um, are, that are being made. And I think in this new generation or whatever you want to call it, um, where new things are coming about and I just think it's really, really cool. Um, especially in a town, what, I mean, I don't know a whole about a lot about Roslyn, but I have a feeling it's a very, very small town. Well, it's a part of Boston and um, yeah, it's like a small neighborhood within Boston. And, um, but it does have its own little village square. It has its own square. It has its own like little small town vibe. Like I, I, like I, I grew up in New York, New Jersey, but when I visited Roslindale for the first time, it felt very familiar. You know, it's like, okay it's got um like it does have that like town square center like rosendale village um it's got the ballpark it's got and then it's got like a, a good variety of different types of housing and things have changed a lot and since um since ryan was growing up there and he he always gave us tours between you be, between like the old neighborhood and the new neighborhood and to see like how much it's changed um but you know the, these um the, the thing that I think is universal and kind of what to what you're speaking of is that people are always dealing with issues in their past and the way you deal with it is what's so unique, right? Or at least you yeah. think it's unique, right? It's unique to you. And I think that every character in this film is dealing with their own personal trauma in some way, but they're all dealing, dealing with it differently. And I think that that's kind of what makes it so real and so authentic. You know, Joey, Jeremy Sisto's character, he basically succumbed to it. He just tried to bury it with alcohol and yeah. he tried to, you know, he, he just try, tried to sort of numb himself out of it. And uh, that led to all sorts of dire consequences. Ronnie, who's the main character, he tried to outrun it. You know, like there are a lot of people who are overachievers and they're just trying to, you know, hide what happened in the past. Uh, and they're trying to like, you know, outrun that pain, outrun that trauma. If I can just be successful and just bury, 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 then I'll be fine. But as you see, you know, him going through this, the trauma resurfacing, you see that it's like eating him from the inside out. He's, it's eating away at him and like 
that's uh, a lot of what the dramatic tension is, is will he come to, you know, the, to grips with the truth of what happened? And, uh, and then Patty, who's the single mother in the film, she's also clearly, she had a traumatic relationship with her husband, with, uh, with Joey. Um, and she was kind of the one person that really fixed herself, like that found a way out of it. And that was a big part of her backstory. And so even though, and even though it's been a long journey, she still made mistakes along the way and she has to deal with those too. And Maybe. so, yeah, and it's, yeah, and it's not, it's, it's not like, it's not like there's an easy out, you know, and it's not like there's an easy way to, to get over that stuff. I think the, the biggest thing is that they, when they try to do it alone in their own way, in a secretive way, when you deal with trauma and you hold on to it and you find other ways to cover it up and it just eats at you, you know, and, and the message of this is you've got Ronnie and Joey, these two troubled kids, they need to come together, you know, at the end for both of them to heal, you know, and, and to find some kind of redemption, you know, uh, and, and with uh, Patty, she's somebody who didn't, you know, get well alone. Like she's somebody who got help and still made mistakes, but she's obviously the most, you know, the healthiest of the three of them. But that message of like, we don't, we're not in this uh, alone, you know, we are in yeah. this thing together. Yeah. And I think we see um, just normally a lot of people say, oh, I don't need to go to therapy because right. if I go to therapy, that's admitting I have a problem and I don't have a problem. And <laughs> right. because it's, it's not seen uh, because I guess sometimes it's seen as weak mm -hmm. sometimes. Still, and I, yeah. mean, and I mean, even speaking to what I do, it's, you know, there's been a larger conversation about creator burnout or whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. And, People are just like, I just need to work, work, work and stuff it down. And then it explodes. Mm -hmm. That's and, right. Yeah. I mean, look at um, Bo Burnham. I had, he made an entire comedy special, whatever you want to call it, um, about anxiety, depression, and the re I think the reason it connected with people is that there's beyond uh, low income housing, I think there's something that people can connect, connect to where it's talking about, I don't think a lot of people like to admit their problems until it's too late. Hmm. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, I think that the, um, what you talk about, like the stigma of um, therapy, and that's something I think that is you know, it's a particular, I think it's a, it's got a particular uh, stigma for like older generations. And I think something that I've been, that I have admired of, you know, younger folks is that there's kind of, they're kind of open about it. You know, more, people are more and more open about going to therapy. And I'm hoping that that means that like, you know, the younger kids, the younger generations could just be mentally, mentally healthier, you know? <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, I think that, um, I, I, and like, yeah, Bro, Bro, Bro Burnham is a perfect example about somebody who's like, look, you know, like mental health is something that we all have to, that we're all dealing with, right? So like when you, when, it, when, when it's out, in, when it's out in front and out in, um, you know, in public view, it destigmatizes it for everybody. And um, that's certainly something that we all, that, that we as filmmakers and storytellers believe is important. Yeah, for sure. And, and um Ryan, I thank you so much for that. I mean, it's, uh, I mean, e even when we're like talking ab about, I don't think many films get made like this, you know? I, I don't think, even in independent film world or whatever you want to call it, I think I can maybe count five films on my hand. And that's, I, I'd really be hard pressed to really think about anything that really approaches this topic um at all really um but yeah i just thanks uh thanks austin um and i hope people see your film i i it's Us too. gonna be out this friday <laughs> uh, i mean i i've it kind of I'll, I'll be honest with you ryan and sean um it kind of came out of nowhere i was like oh i was in my inbox going through my email and i was like oh, right, that's coming out this week. Right. And then I'm like, oh, I have to get an interview because I think one of my mission statements is 
okay, what are the movies nobody is talking about? Let's put that in the spotlight. Um, because I don't think if people don't see these kinds of films, I don't think any more of them get made or much mm. less get awards because people somehow attribute, uh, I guess that's some sort of achievement you make is that if you get the award, you're somehow valid. <laughs> um, but... well, it's, it's hard to get the word out, you know, and the, you're helping us and we really appreciate that because um, yeah, there's just, these monster machines out there that put out again, there's a lot of great movies, you know, it's, it's great. Um, but there's a lot of power behind it and we're, we're a real little engine that, that could. And we've, uh, we have overachieved throughout the process and where we appreciate the challenge and, uh, you know, and we feel like we've got a, a really solid film with amazing actors and, uh, we're just so proud of it. And we're really glad that, that you, uh, you know, you, you enjoy it as well and that you want to get the word out for us. So thank you so much. Yeah, no problem. And I didn't even get to the actors. Holy cow. <laughs> I know, right? I, I was looking at the sheet and I was like, wait, what? <laughs> like, usually when I look at an indie sheet, I'm like, oh, I don't know these people, but I like what they did in the movie. And then I'm like, wait, he was in that show? I've seen that show. <laughs> um, but anyways, I, I, Ryan, John, I want to thank you so much. For your time it's been a true delight um it, it really has i i people can see last night at rosy i believe correct me if i'm wrong because i get this wrong sometimes um i believe it's on vod friday yeah we've got theaters in uh 11 cities okay. um you know boston la and a whole bunch of other cities uh you know that's coming out in and then it's going to be on all streaming platforms in the U u.s north america uh on friday it's last night in rosie and uh yeah you could go to last uh there's a where to watch right there it will have absolutely everywhere you can find it yeah i'll make sure to um that'll be in the description below for anyone who watches this later um a link to that and all the relevant details um I'm sure uh, will all be in the YouTube description as well as the audio version and the written version and all the versions that come out from here <laughs> on out. Um, you are busy. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, no problem. And I will have my review up for, uh, for those who are listening later, probably by the time you're hearing this or watching it or reading it. Um, but if not, it'll be there, I think, tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow. Right. Thank uh, you. I look forward to that. And the next movie we do has to have ramen noodles in it, I promise. <laughs> I love it. I'll, I'll even send you the ramen noodles. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. So you do know how independent filmmakers eat. Yeah. Yes, you do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Austin. This has been wonderful. I, I appreciate your work. Yeah, thank you so much for taking the time. Thank you.